So Unreal Engine 5's early access period uh, has apparently ended now. With uh, the previews getting released, we are starting to get a look at what a final release of the engine might actually look like. That means people are going to start making assets for Nanite, which is Unreal 5's virtualized geometry system that allows you to create assets with pixel level details and also automatically handles LODs. But using Nanite doesn't necessarily grant you beautiful artistic scenes from the get-go. It certainly is a powerful tool, but getting perfect looking scenes uh, is also going to require some work and knowledge on the part of the artist who's creating them. And of course, the tool isn't without limitations as well. So here are two assets created in Blender for use with Nanite in Unreal Engine 5. Notice that the meshes don't actually match. So you see, when I made these two meshes, I subdivided one of them a little bit more than I did the other. And the problem here is closely related to another concept called texel density. Uh, I talk more about texel density in my UV unwrapping video. I'll try and put a link in the description to that. Uh, but the main artistic takeaway here is that when you have assets with differing, differing levels of texture detail in your scene, it can break the immersion and realism, making the whole scene feel off. Now this is something that you do see from time to time in games that have been developed and released. And when you do see it, it kind of stands out. It sort of creates a problem in uh, sort of breaking the immersion of the scene. So it feels off when you see it because it's sort of instantly obvious to the person who's, who's interacting with that, that environment that you've developed that something doesn't fit or something doesn't feel right. And so there, there are techniques that you can use to try and make sure that all the objects in your scenes have similar densities of texture elements or texels, essentially ensuring that the level of texture detail in all of your assets matches. That way nothing feels out of place. But with Unreal Engine 5, now that Nanite has effectively replaced LODs for static meshes, this means that the same problem sometimes seen for texture detail also kind of applies to vertexes as well. If your objects are made with different levels of surface detail, some objects might feel like they don't fit the scene because they're of non-uniform quality. And while it's common practice to standardize texel density for objects in a scene, I haven't really been able to find any discussion around recommendations for vertex counts in Nanite objects. And this is not really surprising because previously it's not something that we really had to think about. One area that this can be really noticeable in Unreal 5 is landscapes. So tessellation is now fully deprecated in the Unreal 5 preview releases. Uh, there's no straightforward way really for you to do on-the-fly texture-driven mesh displacement using subdivisions. And virtual height field meshes, which are the alleged replacement for tessellated landscapes, are still pretty buggy and not really that intuitive to set up. Now as for static meshes, the assets that will make up most of the scenery in a game, just like it is with textures, now that LODs are replaced, uh, essentially, it might become more important to think about standardizing the level of detail of your subdivided meshes. And while the idea behind Nanite is that meshes could have incredible amounts of detail, in reality, this may not be practical for you for a couple of reasons. So number one, file sizes for libraries of hugely dense meshes can become overwhelmingly large. And number two, working with extremely detailed meshes can also slow down your 3D workflow if it becomes a drag on your system performance. So finding some sort of happy medium where you have enough detail in your meshes, but not so much as to become a burden on your, on your systems and on your 3D workflow might be important. So the main question then becomes, uh, how do you actually make sure that all of your nanite meshes have the same level of detail? Because if you just sort of eyeball it, you'll end up like this example where you have some meshes that have higher detail than others and they will look a little bit out of place. Now I'm sure there's an industry standard term for this concept, uh, but I don't work directly in game development. I do 3D modeling. And so for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna call it vertex density, which we'll define as the ratio of the number of vertexes in your mesh to the surface area of that object. In other words, uh, over a certain amount of your object, how many verts do you have there? And because the default unit in Blender, which I use is uh, meters, I'm gonna be defining vertex density as verts per meter squared. So much like texel density, in order to obtain a consistent feel in the level of detail of your artistic scenes, and especially between different static meshes in the same area that might be using the same material sets, you'll likely want to also maintain a consistent vertex density to ensure that your objects feel like they correctly fit into your scene. So for those of us working in Blender, how exactly do you do that? 
Um, because surprisingly, while getting vertex counts themselves isn't that hard, uh, vertex density is actually a little less straightforward, and it's not immediately clear in Blender if there is a fast and easy way to find this out, which sort of makes sense, because in the past, uh, we didn't really have to think about it that much. Uh, we had to think of assets more in terms of static LODs with progressive levels of static vert counts. But this has changed the way that we have to think about LODs now that Unreal Engine 5 with Nanite is handling LODs automatically. Luckily though, through the magic of Python scripting, uh, we're able to code add-ons that can do this kind of work for us. Uh, and actually I've already done this, so I will leave a link in the description to my vertex density checker and you can install that in Blender in order to check how dense the vertexes are in your static meshes. So boom, there you go. So let's look at how do we actually use this. So to install the add-on, if, if you've never installed Blender add-ons before, you go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then just click the Install button and install the zip file. Once you've done that, you'll want to search for the Vertex Density add-on and just make sure that this is turned on. And in order to check the vertex density of your object, simply select the objects and go to the vertex density tool in the side panel and hit check density. And it will tell you how many verts per meter squared your object has. Now you can use this to experiment with and determine uh, optimal vertex densities to shoot for in your scenes in order to achieve consistent levels of detail across the objects in your scenes while also maintaining acceptable workflows. By the way, if you do use this tool for anything, leave a link down in the description because I would love to see what people are working on. I'd love to see, you know, what people are, are making in Blender and, uh, you know, using it for in, in Unreal Engine 5. And if you want to see more of this, then, uh, you know, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will, I will, I will make more content. And if you don't, then uh, I don't know, I don't know why you're here. So that's it for now.